So, Pat Elfline was final. well, not finally, he was put on IR, and I know there are some fans that will be very happy to see him out of the lineup, and because, you know, they, they kind of wanted Pat Elfline shown the door in the offseason, and they ended up cutting uh, right guard Josh Klein, moved Elfline from left guard over to right guard where he played in college, and people were like, eh, don't know how I feel about that because he's Elfline. But he is now on IR for a thumb injury. Now, how this IR thing is working this year, since teams, like, I don't know if you have noticed, are a little IR trigger happy this year. Around that's because you have the three-week rule that you can just put them on there for three weeks and then they can come back. Um, I saw, I forgot who said it. it was in a little Twitter kind of deal. Um... They said it was a thumb injury, but there wasn't any clear timetable, so I'm not sure if this is just a three-week or a potential full season kind of IR here. And the options for right guard now go to well, option one here, Drew Samia. I think we all knew that was probably the first option that they would probably even consider. And I always thought he was a great scheme fit for this offense, and I've always been pretty adamant on this channel about wanting to see Drew Samia get some actual real reps with the ones. And back when he was being, you know, in the draft, I kind of deemed him as a player Minnesota would be kind of dumb to pass on just because of how great of a scheme fit the guy was. And he's only 22 years old. He's on a rookie deal through 2022, and he's a potential long-term guard in minnesota so i don't see any real drawback to seeing can you be that long-term guard you have that consistency are you strong enough can you hold up are you this like you know are you a potential building block along this line which i think bradbury is looking to be i think last week uh he proved he did a little better and i think we already know o'neill is and then you can kind of have another one potentially in uh Samia and also hopefully Ezra Cleveland but I would it, it'd be good to see that and I think that's why that should be the clear first option um the second one is Oli Udo um because he has a shot to be the guy here but I do have my doubts since Samia has always been listed as the second team right guard and the thing that really doesn't let me rule this out is the fact that Udo is kind of a physical freak and because he was uh, 6'5", 323, and he did have a 10-yard split of 1.76, and I do like 10-yard splits for linemen in general over 40-yard dashes just because, you know, how often are you running 40 yards as a lineman? The 10-yard split is how fast you go from 0 yards to 10 yards, which is much more effective for an offensive and defensive lineman. And that 176 is really, really good, especially for a guy who is 6'5", 323. Just for some reference, we all know Ezra Cleveland's also really, really athletic. His 10-yard split was 1.73. And that is ridiculous considering there is a 13 pound difference there. And he also has nearly 36 inch arms, which is also kind of insane. But there could be a potential right tackle plan with him because as I've been over before, there is a possibility they tip their hand a little bit when Riley Reef was kind of in a little bit of a limbo turmoil thing. And they moved O'Neill over from right to left tackle. And there is a potential, I think, for Udo to be the long-term right tackle, potentially, is how they could view him. So there could be a right tackle plan with him, which, if there is, I think they would just want to continue to develop him at right tackle, opposed to moving him into guard and then having him play guard and then maybe potentially go back out to tackle. So there is that. And then the third option, which is also the final option here, I think, is Josh Klein. And I think he's the only real outside kind of option since he worked with this line already last season. And he, you know, he knows the system. The playbook is already in his head. He doesn't need to learn. It's a plug-and-play thing. You, have, you already have chemistry with both 
O'Neill and Garrett Bradbury, so there shouldn't be any issues there between communication and knowing what they want to do. They already know they were with him last year. He was a full-time starter. And the things that make me not really want him over the other two is because I think the other two have potential to be long-term options, where I don't think Josh Klein really does. He's an average kind of journeyman type. And honestly... And this line is not a Josh Klein away from being good or really good. It's not a Josh Klein away. So I really don't see a real benefit into getting Josh Klein if the line's already kind of struggling this much because, well, it's still going to struggle a lot even with him. So I would rather see a young player go in there and see if either they can just do well or if we can see improvement to kind of build towards the future of this line because at the end of the day... Dakota Dozier is on it, so it can't be that great, and I would like to know your guys' comments down below, opinions and things, always good, like and subscribing, also really good, and until next time, I bid y'all adieu.